so at this point we have a little melody going. We have something interesting by using two tracks and changing the decay value on the block. Uh, let's get another element uh, into play and let's uh, start looking at ways of creating something that's a little more rhythmically interesting using cell type. So the element I'm gonna add here is a simple drum from this little uh, peak module. It's a, a module from Off the Later Audio that's a, a clone of a mutual instruments uh, module. Put some links in the notes. Uh, I'll put this out on trigger form. Trigger this one. And this one can work as a lot of different things. A little um, envelope on LFO, uh, but it can also work as a drum which is what we're going to be using here. So the output is going to be the audio of the drum. Connect that over to the little mixer. And let's quickly jump into live mode and just trigger it and make sure that we can actually hear it. So setting a pulse to output trigger output 4 should do it. There we go. So Obviously, we can add this to one of our scripts, and uh, that will let us uh, trigger it. Um, but let's jump back to our metronome script. So right now, what we're doing here is we're simply passing it on to script one, and then we're executing that and just running a little melody. But we could add a few things directly here. So the first thing that might be interesting is having this little uh, drum piece end up. So. If we're adding this, it should be hit every single time on every single beat. There we go. And now we have a little uh, beat that's driving things here. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at to mix things up a little bit is a, a really nice little uh, tool called Every. And essentially what it does is Instead of having this happen at every single step, we can say every two, and then I put a colon, and what that means is every second time this is run, it's going to do everything that comes after that. So now we just hit it on every other step. This is really convenient. Uh, can make it even more interesting maybe by having it every third. Almost giving us a little bit of a, a waltz here. Let's put it back to every second. What happens if we set this one to every third? See how very quickly this added some melodic interest? Now, there's a lot of commands in the teletype you're going to learn that is a specifier of something, then a colon, and then the thing you want to happen. And while you can do more than one thing here, for example, instead of just triggering trigger four, I could also trigger three. And the way I do that is I use a semicolon to separate commands. So now we see that every other step, it hits both of those. And this is useful, the, the whole semicolon is useful because as we talked about previously, we are very limited in the number of commands we can put in our script as a whole. In fact, our scripts can only fill up the screen here. So you only have a very limited number of lines. Each line can only be the width of the screen. So the more you can squeeze into each line, the more you can do in the teletype. This is also one of the things that makes the teletype fun because this is what makes it uh, almost like a little puzzle when you want to do something more complicated. And I, and I say that with a lot of love because it, it truly feels like a fun puzzle to solve. Uh, you have something you want to do, 
but the constraints of the teletype means that you can't just do it in the like the first way you think of it. You have to really think about, all right, I'll separate things out into something and then I'll do something else there and then it all comes together. So one way in which you might experience this very early on is, well, if you have more commands you want to do on this step than you can fit into the line, then you have to solve it some other way. And a way to do that is put them into a script and then just say every something to the script. And then in the script, you can have a full script full of commands. In fact, the very last command that you run in the script could be calling another script, which means you can kind of chain them and get a, a much longer uh, sequence running. Um, there are other ways in which you can, can do things that are more complicated as well, and we'll get to those in future videos. Now, one thing to know about this um, every command is there is an alternative command. Let me just quickly look it up here. Um, yeah. So let's say every three we arrange script one, and instead of having this happen two, we can set it up to run on other. Which means that now, whenever that every three is not being run, this gets run. And suddenly we have a, a whole other rhythmic complexity here that's really fun, right? Um, there are some other interesting commands that are kind of like this, and we can explore some of them uh, just briefly here. Uh, there, there are commands both that let you do things like Obviously, if you have a lot of these every commands, you can get into a very long sequence of overlapping things. And once in a while, you might you might want them all to like go back to zero together. And the way you do that is there's a command called sync. Uh, and so that lets you sync them all um, back to the same uh, beginning and then they'll start again from there. Um, we've seen the use of other here, which is very useful. It's worth noting that you can use other, not just once. All other does is it looks at the last every command. And whenever that's not running, that's when other runs. So we could have one every command up here and another for that. And then we could have another every command after and then another after that. Um, might sound a little complicated, but if you try it out, you'll quickly get the hang of it. And it just makes a really easy way to interleave things for that kind of rhythmic complexity. Uh, now, the other thing you can do is uh, you can do the exact opposite, which is instead of saying that I want to run this every third time this is happening, I can also say that I want to skip every third. So now we're kind of inversing the relationship here, right? And you'll notice that other behaves in exactly the same way. Other still just looks at, did that last one hit or not? And if it doesn't hit, then the other would hit. So an easy way to do to use this to, to create some rhythmical uh, sequences is, you could imagine that you had a, a, a snare drum that you had set every four, trigger that. And then you could have a hi-hat and saying other hi-hat. And now you would get something that interleaved between each other. If you had a whole set of uh, elements, you could have something that was very interesting and very complex driven by that. The only thing to remember is we only have those four outputs. There are some expanders available for the teletype that gives us more outputs, but no one is producing those right now. So you can't actually buy one unless you happen to find one used. There are plans, open source plans online that let you build one of your own if you're feeling confident enough in that. Uh, but in general, you probably want to assume that you only have the four outputs and limit yourself to that. Uh, the one other command that's a little bit like this I want to mention here is, uh, let's see, let me quickly find it here. Uh, where did they go? Oh yes. Um, if we want to add 
a little bit of let me switch this one back to if we want to add a little bit of randomness again here we can use prop and then a number between 0 and 100 so I'll give it prop 40 and what that means is that it'll do a probability check every time and 40% of the times it will execute the scripts. And so this lets us start to do something that feels a little generative in that it is going to be, the more, the more complexity we add, the more it's going to be something that is different every time you run it. Um, I find myself reaching for these every other and prop uh, very often. They're just a really, really easy and fast way to build up a little bit of complexity in the sequence that you have running in your in your Euro rack. I hope this was useful. Um, as always, let me know in the comments if there's something else you want me to cover or something you want me to go deeper on. Thank you for watching.